Hey, have you heard any good books lately? This is Talking Audiobooks, your weekly podcast for all news, discussion, and opinions surrounding the wonderful world of audiobooks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are, whenever you may be listening. This is the Talking Audiobooks podcast, season number two, episode number seven. I am your host, the man with a face made for radio and the voice made for print, Casey Trowbridge, and I am so happy to be with you. As I said, I am happy to be with you on 7-7-2017 with the seventh episode of this season of Talking Audiobooks. We have sevens all over the place. And that's good news if you're a fan of gambling, I guess. Blackjack! Me, I never win, so, you know, I try to stay away from it, and that's a topic for the They're Coming to Cap My Knees podcast, which I will be hosting at the end of football season, but I don't really want to get into that right now. I'm always happy to be with you on Talking Audiobooks. I have enjoyed doing this podcast so much, telling you about what I'm listening to, trying to find out about what you're listening to, getting recommendations, getting to know you as listeners and as audiobook fans. It has just been such a joy interacting with narrators and authors and fans on Twitter. Uh, in particular, has been a lot of fun. I joined a couple new Facebook groups. Well, the groups aren't new, but they're new to me. Uh, the Audiobook Addicts and Audiobook Lovers Facebook groups. Um, I have joined those to get to know listeners better. And I hope that I am giving you a podcast that you enjoy. As always, we welcome your feedback. Feedback at TalkingAudiobooks.com Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know what you'd like to hear more of on the show. And we will do our best to make that happen. Unless you want to hear Ken as host again, that is not going to happen. It is non-negotiable. But anything else, we're pretty much open to it. Uh, not replacing me as host either. That That's a subject for uh, uh, wishful thinking. But I have a little bit of news this week, but it's not really audiobook related news as much as it is news related to the podcast. And that is that Talking Audiobooks is now available to you on TuneIn and Stitcher. By the time you hear this, hopefully you'll be able to find uh, the show in those two apps in particular. And we are expanding our content platforms, the number of ways you can find the podcast, slowly but surely. We want you to be able to hear this on anything that you could want to hear it on, any app, any device, whatever. We want it to be listener-friendly all around. And so that is our goal, and being on Stitcher and TuneIn in particular is one step closer to us achieving that goal. So you can check out the podcast on those apps at your convenience and subscribe if you want to. And of course, iTunes is available, as is our website, TalkingAudiobooks.com. I also want to announce the winner of our June is Audiobook Month giveaway, if you recall. We had a little contest in the month of June. You could win six credits from audible.com to use on whatever you wanted. And all you had to do was email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com to get into the contest. And some of you did. And one of you was rewarded for that. And we are announcing the winner. It's already hit social media. But we have Elena Alvarez Docile. And I'm almost sure that I'm pronouncing at least two of those things wrong. Maybe maybe just the last part. Uh, it's D-O-S-I-L. I'm only confident about getting Alvarez right. But Elena won the giveaway for the six promo codes from audible.com and she has received those so 
she's happy enough just from that that she can forgive my potential mangling of her name. Uh, we'll have a link to her blog because she writes audiobook reviews and things like that. We'll have a link to her blog in our show notes and uh, maybe even a link to her Twitter so that you can follow her and congratulate her on being the first person to win a giveaway from the Talking Audiobooks podcast. As we say constantly, there are more giveaways to come. And to that end, you can head over to facebook.com slash talking audiobooks. That's all one word, no special characters in there anywhere. And if you like that page, facebook.com slash talking audiobooks, you will be entered into the July giveaway. Cool and in July, we are giving away four promo codes from audible.com that you can use on whatever you want. Um, it's worth pointing out that these do not work on audible.co.uk so far as I know. And so you have to have access to the U.S. version of audible.com to uh, make this worthwhile. Uh, hopefully we can find something to do for you international listeners down the road. But for now, this is what we're working with. So anyone who has liked the page, either already, if you already like the page, you're in. If you like the page between now and July 31st, you're in. And the drawing will be held after July 31st name will be select that random and you will receive four codes from audible is it as good as the six that elena got no it's not but you know what four is nothing to sneeze at and you know next month it could be six again it could be four again it could be something else you'll just have to wait and see what we cook up in the future and you know we're gonna try to be more aggressive with giving stuff away as well so we will definitely have plenty more opportunities for you to enter and to win so that is our way of showing you our listeners how much we appreciate you by giving back of ourselves to you and mostly giving back from ken i don't give you anything except my voice every week and that should be enough but i do pick the contest so when I say we're giving away four credits, I'm the one that came up with that number. So I'm giving you back of Ken's stuff. What's and the big idea? Next year or next month, maybe we'll give away some of his money. What's the matter know. with you? It'll just depend. The other thing that I want to mention is that interviews are coming soon. And when I say they're coming soon, I realize that that's still sort of vague. But I promise you that they are coming soon and probably sooner than you think on this podcast. And so that will make it more interesting for you to hear other people besides me give their perspectives on audiobooks and the industry and what's going on. And we have some exciting ones planned. I'm looking forward to doing them because I... I'd like to say that I know something about this field, but I have a one-person perspective, and I want to get different people on it and widen the spectrum of things that you hear about every week. Listening back to the podcast and what caught my ear in previous weeks, for example, I think, you know, this is a really male-heavy uh, interest level type thing that I'm doing, you know, I want to give uh, recognition to women and things like that. And the, one of the caught my ear titles this week is meant to sort of do that a little bit. But that's also going to be facilitated a great deal by interviews that we do. And like I said, soon, I promise. It will be soon. I hope that you all had a nice celebration last week. If it was Canada Day on the 1st, if it was the 4th of July here in the States. If it was just a good week 
throughout the world. I hope that it truly was an enjoyable week for you. I hope you enjoyed our first theme episode of Talking Audiobooks, audiobooks for the 4th of July that we put up and gave you some samples to listen to of uh, early American history. And, of course, Johnny Tremaine was one of those, and that's not American history, but it is set in that independence time period. And we hope you enjoyed that because we plan to do more of those. We plan to tie giveaways to that as well, so there will be yet more chances for you to win just based on that. What I would say about that is if you have a suggestion for a potential theme, it doesn't have to be a topic like the 4th of July or American Independence. It could be uh, a, a audio uh, discography sort of like an author and his body of work or a narrator and their body of work whatever it might be we would love to hear your ideas for themes we have our own ideas and like i said we're going to be soliciting recommendations from you on specific books to include in specific themes but if you have a theme idea that you would like us to tackle, email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com and share it with us. We would love to hear from you. If we take your recommendations, we'll probably slide you a promo code for a free book from Audible. What? And that seems to me to be a good reason to contribute to the show. You never know when we look at an idea and say, that's a really great idea. Let's slide that person a code or two to, to thank them for giving us such a great idea. So I hope you enjoyed the, the theme show for that, and I hope you enjoy them in the future. And like I said, we'll probably announce a, a theme show next week. We'll probably toss out a theme and give you a little bit of time to make recommendations for that, and then we'll release it when it's ready. But that's a lot of what is going on right now in terms of the podcast and what we are going to be offering you. Now, in terms of audiobook news, uh, it is past the 1st of July. This is the second month of the podcast. So I want to recommend to you a trip over to Amazon.com. Browse their monthly Kindle deals. They update these the first of each month. Search the ebooks with Audible narration. That'll give you the Whisper Sync titles and go through those and see if there's any that you are interested in. Because if you can get the Kindle book at a nice enough discount, you can add the audiobook at a discount and it will cost you in cash less than the value of your credit. And that's always a good thing. The other thing that I want to mention to you is that the ChristianAudio.com website is giving away another free book, as they do every month. They change that out on the first of the month as well. So head over to ChristianAudio.com slash free, and you will receive this month's book by clicking on the confirm, or if you uh, aren't already signed up for their newsletter, they will ask you to sign up. That's the only condition on on getting a free book. You'll need an account because these books will be added to a library, but that's free. You don't need a membership to participate in this. You just need an account so that you can access it as part of your library, either on your desktop or Mac or you know on your mobile device through one of their apps. And this month's free title from Christian Audio is called Risen, and it is a 2017 Audio Award winner, and it's written by Angela Hunt. It's, like I said, it's an Audio winner. I guess it was a movie as well. It's it's a male-female narration tandem on this one, and it's free from Christian Audio this month. Go to christianaudio.com slash free and you can find it. We'll have a link to the book in the show notes as well so you can learn a little bit more about that and find out if it appeals to you or is interesting to you in any way, shape, or form. And if it is, you can go get it. And if it's not, you don't have to. It's that simple. We're not 
forcing anybody to do anything on this podcast. Ken's forcing me to be here, but that's not really forced because I enjoy doing it so much. But that's about as close as it comes when it when it comes to forcing anybody to do anything. That's about as close as we get here on the podcast. And again, check out Audiobook Sync, S-Y-N-C, audiobook, S-Y-N-C dot com. Two new titles came out yesterday, and they're up there for a week, and you can add them to your library. We've talked about that before. Um, That's something to get books in the hands of teenagers as they uh, are on their summer months, and it's to keep them actively reading and listening and really, it does. It's it's for teens, but it's you know stuff in there for younger kids as well. I would imagine it's, and presumably younger kids will eventually be teenagers. So always good to build up that library now if you can, especially if you can do it for free, right? So that's really the plugs that I have and the comments that I want to make. We're going to take a break here. We're going to hear from Audible as to how you can get a free trial of audible.com. Who knows what other promos Ken might throw in to surprise us. And I say surprise us and not surprise you because oftentimes I get an email from him and he'll say, did you hear what I did in the show this week? Did you hear what I put in after you made some stupid comment about me? Or What? You know, did you hear what I put in to annoy you? He, a couple weeks ago, he heard me complain on the show about Vuvuzelas, and he found the audio, and it's really ruined our relationship, quite frankly, that he did that to me. But uh, he did it to all of you as well, so he really owes everybody who listens to this a free book just for making him hear the stupid Vuvuzelas. I don't even know what that means. But that's a different rant for a different time. Right now, we're going to go to uh, a word from Audible, and when we come back, we are going to talk about my listening stats through the first half of 2017, and why are we going to talk about my listening stats through the first half of 2017? Well, it's simple. We're going to talk about mine so that you'll be inspired to tell me about yours, and we'll do that right after this word from Ken and Audible.com. For you, the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks for your free audiobook. And now back to your host, Casey Trowbridge. And we're back, and thanks, Ken, for telling us about how you can get a free trial of Audible.com and help this podcast. And we would love it if you would take advantage of that if you have not already. 2017 is halfway over. In fact, as I record this, it is July 2nd, 2017, and it is just past noon Central Time, so the halfway point of the halfway day has passed we now have more of 2017 behind us than we do ahead of us and because the year is half over i thought it would be fun to take a look at my listening stats through the first half of the year make some comments on that And I thought it would be fun to have you tell me about how you're doing this year. Are you happy with your progress? We talked about slumps last week. So tell us this week about your progress. And is it positive or did you find yourself in a slump or two this year as compared to years past? Now, this segment of the show that I am doing could pretty much be brought to you by Microsoft Excel because I keep a spreadsheet and I know I've mentioned this spreadsheet on the podcast before. You know what I should do for all of you? I should make the thing available for like 
request request it and I'll email it to you and and then you could see the spreadsheet that has taken on a life of its own I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and I said this thing is probably the most valuable thing that I own because if something were to happen to it and if I didn't have a backup I couldn't duplicate it from the ground up the way I have it now I just couldn't if I had to start this over again there's no way I could have as much detail as I do now and that's a product of keeping it since 2013 so I use this spreadsheet for a lot of different things to keep track of my audiobook purchases and my listens and things like that so this part of the podcast is brought to you by Microsoft Excel and my my spreadsheet Ken has seen it and he knows that when I talk about it being mythical in terms of detail and in terms of the stats that it contains that I am not kidding I get a lot about different things on this show but I do not kid about my obsession with statistics so how am I doing as of this recording in terms of listens in 2017 well as of now I have listened to 80 books 75 of which are books that I heard for the first time this year, which means that five of them are books that I have heard previously. And I can tell you what those books are. The Martian, which is one that I mentioned a couple weeks ago because needed to re-listen to a favorite for audio bingo, and that's the one I picked. Uh, I mentioned another one earlier in this podcast, or maybe later, I don't even remember. I think it's actually later Uh, I'm recording this segment out of order, so uh, this little bit, um, I recorded it earlier, but it's something you're going to hear later. Uh, Death of WCW is a book that I listened to again this year. Um, You're going to hear a little bit more about that release later on in this show, but um, it's again, it's one that I listened to for the second time. Uh, in 2017 first time was last year when it came out and then one that i have listened to many many times over since it came out in 2014 is william shakespeare's star wars by ian desher narrated by a full cast and its subsequent sequels william shakespeare's the empire striketh back and william shakespeare's the jedi doth return those are the five books that i have listened to 2017 that i've heard before but otherwise these 80 books that i have heard 75 percent of them first time listens they constitute approximately 46,475 minutes and 30 seconds and i say approximately because i calculate book running times by the minute and i don't always round up or down Um, based on how many seconds there are in the final minute like if it's 14 hours 35 minutes and 14 seconds i do round down but i don't always round up if it's like 14 hours 35 minutes and 51 seconds so my time is a little bit approximate and things of that nature but that'll give you some idea of how many minutes i've listened to and Uh, I could pull the number off of my spreadsheet, but I won't. If you want to calculate how many hours or days that is, to calculate the hours, take 46,475 divided by 60. And to calculate the days, take the number you got in that first equation and divide it by 24. And you will find out how many days out of this year I have listened to an audiobook so far. So 80 titles, that's the most important thing. I think everything else is not going to be as much of an interest to you as it might be to me. What I can tell you about the 80 titles that I've heard this year and the 75 new ones is that four of them I have given five stars to. But the trick to that is that two of the five star books are ones that I re-listen to. So only two of the books that I have listened to this year have gotten the full five star rating from me. A couple have been in the 4.5 star range, 
The two books I listened to this year thus far that have gotten the five-star treatment are Marvel, Civil War from Graphic Audio, and Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, narrated by Scott Brick. I enjoyed both of those immensely, obviously. I wouldn't have given them five stars if I didn't. But those are the only two new reads that have gotten that particular rating. As far as my listening progress goes, it has broken down in an interesting way. January has been my best month for both titles and minutes listened. We're talking 21 titles and over 11,000 minutes. February was next with over 10,000 minutes and 19 titles. March, April, May, all nine titles, all in the 5,000 minute range. But the point is from January through May, the first five months of the year, my listening decreased every month. Titles were the same in March, April, and May, but the minutes were not. I listened to more minutes in March, then April, then May. It got less and less with each month, which meant that in April, I listened to shorter books than I did in March, and in May, I listened to shorter books than I did in April. And part of that is a little misleading because April was the month when I first listened to a book at twice the speed. And so I actually factored that into my spreadsheet calculations. So I took the minutes that I had and divided it by half to get the, to get per, for a book. I didn't listen to every book at 2x speed in April, but when I did, I would input the formula to have that reflected in the minute count. And in May, I listened to a few more books that way. So it's a little bit misleading. I probably listened more in April than I did in March. And I might have listened more in May than I did in March, although maybe not as much as April. But in terms of, you know, actual time, it, it is reflected accurately. But in March, I hadn't listened to a book at 2x speed yet. That was a new wrinkle that I didn't do until April and something that has been discussed on this podcast already when I was on with Ken and transferring power from one of us to the other from him to me because he now has no power June I reversed the trend and in June was up in June I listened to 13 titles and you know about 7,000 minutes so June was a good month for my uh, listening I was happy with it and of course a lot of the credit for that goes to audio bingo because I had a task to complete and I wanted to do it right. Uh, nine of the titles I listened to in June were to fill the audio bingo qualifications and so that helped quite a bit and kept me on target as far as listening. My goal on Goodreads for this year the reading challenge that Goodreads has. Um, my goal was 100 books, and of course, I'm 80% of the way there. The last time I looked, I was like 30 books ahead of schedule, probably 29 at this moment. So unless something disastrous happens, my goal is going to be met. Now, we will delve into my spreadsheet more at the end of the year, and I will talk to you about my reading trends over the past few years and how they may have changed. But I will say this. In terms of titles and minutes, my worst months are in the fall and have been for four years now. October is my worst month for reading out of the year, and I do not know why. Um, September also isn't great. I have a better idea as to why September hasn't been great, which is that September is football season, and that means that I am not reading much on Sundays because of football, and maybe not reading as much on Saturday because of college football. So September I can explain, and I guess that would explain October too, because 
football is still going on, but it, it, it's it's actually one of those things. September, October, November, not great. And December is a better month. Get a lot of listening done in December for some reason. If I had to venture a guess as to why that would be, that guess would be that um, September, uh, December rather is the month in which I have just acquired a bunch of new books on Black Friday and I want to get into them. So I would say that that would help contribute to uh, the increase in December. But that's the thing we'll look at a little bit closer at the end of the year. Because I think if you as an individual did it, and I realize that I'm more stats obsessed than most of you listening to this are going to be. Really? And that's fine. But I think if you did this as an individual, it would be interesting to you for you to see your own stats. What months of the year are your best for listening and what months aren't as good? Maybe you're fairly consistent throughout. Maybe you get 12 titles every month like clockwork and end up with 120 at the end of the year. But maybe you do better in some months than you do in others as well. So maybe you don't keep a spreadsheet with that information like I do. Maybe it's just intuition that tells you which months you do better in than others. But um, for me, being at 80 halfway through the year, that would mean I'm on a pace for 160. I'm probably not getting there. Um, I could get to 120. My best year for listening has been 2015. That was the year I got to 150 books. And last year it was 120. 2014, I'm actually, the next book I read this year will be number 81, and that will tie me for 2014, but far fewer minutes, because I've been listening to much shorter books this year than I did back then. So that's why the difference in minutes would be so big, despite the same number of titles. And that's why I keep track of both, because one doesn't necessarily tell you as much as knowing both stats would. I think my book listening has gotten shorter in general over the years. I used to really only be interested in longer books for some reason. And uh, give me a 35-hour Ted Williams biography. It didn't scare me at all. Uh, so like 2013, 2014, lengthy books, even if there weren't as many of them. 2017, more titles, shorter in fact, one of the books that I finished June with it was only like four hours and 45 minutes long. And it was, it was a lot of fun. But for me, that's pretty short. Not the shortest thing I've listened to this year. The shortest thing I've listened to this year is actually six minutes long. And it's uh, Goodnight Smartphone. It was um, Ariana Huffington put it out. And it was a free download from Audible early in the year and it was if you've heard good night moon or read good night moon it's kind of her takeoff on that and uh, it's about putting technology away at the end of the day and that was six minutes long so in the category of percentage that i keep track of percent of minutes listened to that book accounts for zero percent of the minutes that i've listened to this year because it's only six minutes long out of the 80. And yes, I do keep track of that kind of weird detail. So, you know, like I said, 100 books was my goal. It'll be revised up once I hit that number. Probably put it at 120, which was how many I listened to last year and was my final goal on Goodreads. The thing about the Goodreads challenge is that for an audiobook listener, I don't know if this is true for a person who just reads ebooks or hardcovers or paperbacks or whatever but for an audiobook listener the goodreads reading challenge if you set your number too high and if you don't listen to books at two or three times normal speed 
it can actually discourage you from reading longer books because you want to keep your pace up. So like if you read a hundred books, that's one every three days, basically one every four days to keep pace throughout the year to get to a hundred by the end of the year. So the easiest way to keep pace is with shorter titles. I am not really sure how I feel about the reading challenge. I do it every year, but it feels like it's a little bit of a discouragement from listening to longer titles, which is the complete 180 from how I used to be when I would listen to titles all of the time. I've added 156 books to my library so far this year, which is about right for this time of the year. And again, that's not me buying 156 books. A lot of those are free. It could be really out of whack by the end of the year, in part because of this podcast. But 156 new titles added to my library in 2017. My current book total is 1,204. And of those, I have listened to 449 of them that accounts for 37% of my library is comprised of books that I've heard before or heard this year, things that I've actually listened to. My So 449 from 1204 gets you the number of titles in my library that I have never listened to. Actually, it's a little bit more misleading for, than that because I may have listened to them just before I kept track on the spreadsheet and there are a few titles in which that is true for purposes of the spreadsheet and keeping it simple. And if you saw the thing, you'd laugh at the idea of me keeping it simple. But for that purpose, even if I've read it before, if it doesn't appear as read on the spreadsheet um, with a date next to it, then it is considered unread, even if I read it several times before the thought of keeping a spreadsheet even appealed to me. So 37%, I can kind of live with that. I'd like it to be a little bit higher, but since I acquire so many books for free through various means like Audiobook Sync and things like that, it doesn't really bother me that it's lower than 40 or 50% because it's not really money wasted necessarily. My average rating for all the books that I've listened to from 2013 when I started keeping track until now is in the 3.82 out of 5 star range. So I tend to listen to things that I am pretty sure that I'm going to like. Usually I'm right. Uh, I don't think I've given more than one book I've listened to since I've kept track one star. Maybe someday I'll talk about the worst book I've listened to since I've been keeping track, but uh, that will have to be for a different day. So how are you doing in 2017? Do you like your pace? Are you listening to uh, a good mix of genres and stuff? I keep track of different things like how many different authors I've heard this year. And, you know, I've heard like 58 authors And let me sort of preface that by saying someone like James Patterson has a lot of co-authors, but for the purposes of classification, they all get kind of bunched into him. So uh, on on the spreadsheet page that I keep for this specific year, it says James Patterson et al. That constitutes one. So 58 so far this year, 51 solo narrators plus books that have more than one narrator so i've heard 51 different individual narrators go solo plus books with uh, multiple narrators and those always top the list in terms of percentage wise most of the books that i listen to uh, are multiple narrated because i listen to so many different narrators and in a given year it's hard to have one solo person dominate when compared to an entire group of books that just get classified as being narrated by multiple people and genres i'm doing okay i probably think i'm at 14 different genres 
this year. It's about the same number of different publishers. Actually, the publishers are higher, but uh, books that are self-published get grouped together. And a uh, series, I've tried something like 19 different series this year, or listened to a book from 19 different series. I am happy with that. I've gotten to try out a lot of new series this year, and I've had fun with most of them, and will probably keep listening. I'm big on series now, so... That's kind of the most nerd obsessive uh, stats information that I have. And if you want to commiserate with me over that, I would be more than happy to. But if yours isn't that detailed, that's fine too. I just want you to tell me if you're happy with your progress this year. Tell me what books you have really liked. How many have you given five stars to? Do you grade as harshly as I do, or are you more free giving of your five star ratings? I just am curious to know if you're happy with your listening progress at the halfway point of the year. You still got half the year to go. There's plenty of times to get back on track if you're behind or set a new goal. I actually have a goal for this year that I set in January that I have not even started yet. My goal at the beginning of the year was to listen to the Lord of the Rings trilogy this year, and I have not even gotten through book one yet. I have not even attempted book one yet. So will I get it done? I don't know. It's still on my list. If it's not accomplished this year, it goes on my list of things to accomplish in 2018. But I still got plenty of time this year to get it done if I really want to. And hopefully I can because I like to achieve these goals. And, um, you know, I think something I'm very seriously thinking that next year trying an audio bingo type experiment that lasts the whole year might be of interest to me just to see if doing it that way and coming up with some unique categories like listen to a Western or listen to something that has been on your list for two years or listen to a narrator you've never heard before or whatever the categories might be. I'm not going to infringe on Jess and Tina's idea, but the concept and the thought of stretching it out to an entire year kind of intrigues me as well as maybe having a different group of categories each month. That might be fun. So there's a lot of things that could be done there. But really, tell me about your listening. Are you good with what you've done? What do you want to get done? What have been your favorites? What have been things that you haven't liked as much? Have you tried a new genre this year? Have you discovered a new favorite narrator? Whatever it might be, I would love to hear from you. You can tweet me at AudiobookCasey. You can email the show, feedback at TalkingAudiobooks.com, uh, Facebook. Uh, facebook.com slash talking audiobooks however you want to let us know what you're up to at the half year point and like i said we will discuss my spreadsheet more and more uh, when i do my year in review show in early 2018 ken's not getting rid of me until at least then really so that is going to be that um, sorry, this little segment was a little heavy on the math, and I'm not a big math fan, so I do apologize for making you do homework on the Talking Audiobooks podcast. But the good news is, if you did all the math correctly, uh, Ken will send you a check for $5 million. What? Um, it won't be anything you can actually cash. Uh, it might not even be American dollars. I, I don't know where Ken stores his vast fortune he did tell me that for him you know like fort knox would be like you know the cost of a swimming pool for him I, what's the matter with I, you? I think i'm underpaid by by hearing that news that fort knox the value of fort knox is how much he spent on his swimming pool he and scrooge mcduck i think are the two people that you know they compete back and forth for the title of uh world's wealthiest duck you're fired i have no choice you're fired 
For you, the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks for your free audiobook. And now back to your host, Casey Trowbridge. Welcome back to And we're back. It's time now for the What Caught My Ear segment this week. This is the segment where I go through the pre-order listings on audible.com and see what jumps to my attention. And we actually have two books again this week. One of them, which will be the second one discussed, has a story behind it that relates to a previous episode of this podcast. And so we're going to leave you in suspense a little bit on that. But... I don't want that to entirely overshadow what I'm about to discuss because this book is something that interests me for reasons that I will discuss shortly. The title is Pirate Women, the Princesses, Prostitutes, and Privateers Who Ruled the Seven Seas. It is a production of Tantor Audio. It was released on July 4th, 2017. It has a running time of 9 hours and 48 minutes. It was narrated by the wonderful Hilary Huber, who is someone I enjoy listening to and receives several awards for her narration and is always nominated for Audis, it seems like. And the author is Laura Sook Duncombe. And I'm sure I'm going to pronounce that differently because it's D-U-N-C-O-M-B-E. And I'm sure I'm probably going to say that three different ways before the end of this little bit. But this book appeals to me. I hope it appeals to women. I would like to find more titles that appeal to the female listeners because this is titles that I pick and they tend to be guy centric because of course I am a man however I thought maybe this one would hold some interest to our female audience as well as to anybody that happens to be a history buff or a fan of pirates and when you think of pirates you probably think of Long John Silver or the Pirates of the Caribbean movies or if you're a baseball fan maybe you think of the team from Pittsburgh but When you think of pirates, you probably don't think of women as pirates very often. That seems a little strange to me because, of course, we know throughout history that female leadership is not uncommon. I read a book a few years ago, The Woman Who Would Be King. It was about Hatshepsut, the Egyptian ruler who was, of course, female, so... Women in positions of authority is not as new as some might uh, like you to believe. But for whatever reason, pirate women through history seem to get the short shrift when it comes to attention and uh, depictions in popular culture. Of course, pirates are something that popular culture is fascinated by. That's why we have Pirates of the Caribbean movies in the first place. That's we have... That's why we have National Talk Like a Pirate Day. That's uh, something that has been true even back when Mark Twain wrote Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer was obsessed during that book with being a pirate and the pirate code and acting like a pirate. There's a scene with him and uh, Joe Harper and Huck Finn on an island and they're preparing themselves to be pirates. So... Pirates in popular culture and capturing the public imagination is not new, but Laura Suck Duncombe, rather, would say that there were plenty of women who fell into that category, and they are ignored by history, and I am one of those people for whom this is a fascinating subject because I came across a quote not too long ago. It's attributed to Thomas Henry Huxley. Of course, on the internet, you never really know who 
said what, what? and if it's uh, valid. Um, one of my favorite examples of this is uh, I saw a joke quote on the internet, and I hope I don't have to point this out that it was a joke, but I'm going to just be on the safe side. It, it was a quote, and it says, you can use the internet to prove pretty much anything. Abraham Lincoln. And I put that on Facebook, and someone actually said, well, Abraham Lincoln talked about the internet? Uh, no. The point is that it's easy to misattribute quotes to people. This quote was, try to learn something about everything and everything about something. I do try to do that, you know, <laughs> leave it up to the individual to decide how well I'm doing in that particular endeavor, but um, I do certainly try and I do enjoy reading women's history and books about forgotten women and things like that. And of course, I never really thought too much about women as pirates. I didn't think that there weren't any. I was never that naive, of course. You know, all of the popular depictions or what have you are the male pirates. And so I thought this would be an interesting thing for someone like me to read because I am fascinated by history in the first place. Like I said, I enjoy reading books like this. I enjoy reading books about forgotten women or just obscure people in general, you know, that maybe people don't get to read all that much about. So the fact that it's, you know, a subject that holds my interest, it th jumped out at me. The title jumped out at me, I have to say. And Hilary Huber being the narrator does not hurt things at all because, like I said, I enjoy her work. And she gets a lot of praise for her work, and justifiably so. And so without further ado, and without me rambling too much more, uh, we're going to play an excerpt from Pirate Women. And after that, we will come back and we will discuss my second Caught My Ear title for this week. And we'll tell you a little story about how that came to be. So for right now, here is Tantor Audio's Pirate Women by Laura Sook Duncan and Hilary Huber is the narrator. And here is an excerpt from that book. Strangers, who are you? Where do you sail from? Are you traitors or do you sail the sea as pirates with your hands against every man? and every man's hand against you. These lines come from Homer's Odyssey, one of the earliest existing texts. Piracy, one of the world's oldest professions, has been around even longer than the blind poet and also shares a birthplace with him, the Mediterranean. Since the late Bronze Age, this area has been a hotbed for piratical activity. In fact, the word pirate comes from the ancient Greek word piero, which means to make an attempt. According to an Egyptian clay tablet from the period, the people of the eastern Mediterranean were attacking ships as early as the 14th century BCE, and it is not a big surprise given the geography of the area. Greece is one of the most mountainous countries in Europe, with a rugged terrain unsuitable for farming. Hence, civilizations sprang up only in flat pockets near the shore, where the mountain ranges tapered off. But even in these flatter areas, the rocky soil was of too poor quality to be hospitable to crops. Villages, by necessity, had to be small and humble. They could not grow large and prosperous, because there was not enough arable land to grow food to feed a large village. Since the ancients could not grow enough food to be profitable, they were forced to take up fishing as a way to make a living. In the water beyond their shores, food such as fish, squid, octopus, and shellfish flourished. An average, able-bodied man would have had access to a boat for fishing. For him to be successful, he also needed navigation and sailing skills. Sailing in the ancient world bore little relation to the sailboats and speedboats enjoyed by sailors today. 
Without the modern invention of GPS, sonar, power engines, and the National Weather Service, sailors had to be conscious every moment of the water depth, the weather conditions, and their position in the sea in order to avoid running aground, capsizing, or becoming lost. These skills, learned by necessity for fishing purposes, came in handy for the men and women who eventually turned to piracy. The scarcity of good soil and natural resources naturally led to trade. Since it was virtually impossible to cross over any of the Greek mountains in those days, and moving stuff by sea is always easier anyway, the sea turned into the Greek highway system as the best and most efficient way to get around and conduct trade. One city-state would specialize in a particular good or crop and ship it to other city-states, selling their product and purchasing the products of other city-states. Over time, the best routes to navigate from city-state to city-state became well-known and well-used and irresistible to pirates. In fact, the very geography of the sea itself helped to foster piracy. The Mediterranean basin is essentially an obstacle course of small islands. Large trade ships were forced to sail in very narrow lanes between the islands and the shore in order to avoid shipwrecks. Before the advent of this steam engine, sailors were at the mercy of the currents and tides and unable to deviate from the courses nature charted. Ships could not sail in the winter or during rough weather. All these factors combined meant that large trade ships were likely to pass through only certain small areas and only under certain weather conditions. They were sitting ducks for the pirates, who had only to lie in wait among the many islands along the coast for a big ship to pass by. Beyond the physical geography, political reasons helped piracy take off. The small, isolated villages that grew out of the landscape created independent settlements that were not easily governed by a single body. Greece was not one unified country as it is today, but rather a collection of loosely connected groups who had their own governments, identities, and ways of life. These city-states were allied in name, but were often rivals in practice. Hostilities between city-states were not uncommon. Piracy easily sprang up between the city-states because it did not seem like stealing from one's own country. Capturing a merchant ship from another city-state was fair game in an area of scarce resources. With all these factors in its favor, piracy was considered part of the rhythm of life during the late Bronze Age. And once again, that was an excerpt of Pirate Women from Tantor Audio. The second title to catch my ear this week is a throwback to a previous episode of this podcast. If you'll recall the June 16th episode of the podcast, if you've been listening that long, that I did a segment called Missing in Audio, and it was a segment where I gave my list of audiobooks that hadn't been made yet, essentially. These were audiobooks that I wanted to see of titles that I knew about that Maybe they had gotten abridged audiobooks before, but never the unabridged treatment. Or maybe they'd never been released to the commercial market at all. And when I did that show, before I recorded it, I went to Audible and I typed in some of the titles that I mentioned in that segment. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that none of them had come out or none of them were up for pre-order because I look foolish enough as it is, you know, just in general life, I don't need to have people emailing me and saying, hey, dummy, that book you said was missing in audio came out in April. So, so much for what you know, maybe I should host the show. Uh, You know, I don't need any emails like that. I mean, I get enough of those from Ken every week, and he's the guy that hired me to do this. So I do my show prep, and I do my segment prep, and I make sure that none of the titles that I want to talk about have come out 
or are up for pre-order because that would have changed things entirely. So you're gonna have to fast forward again to June 27th. I recorded the podcast that aired on the 30th a few days before then, and I think I mentioned sleep being an issue for me that previous week, and it was crazy. Um, Just not getting enough hours of it, essentially, and that would cause me to go to bed at earlier times some days and later times some other days and it was just inconsistency i wasn't getting a lot of sleep and it wasn't coming at the right time of day either which is a problem that i face regularly but on this particular uh day i had woken up at three in the morning and i had gotten like seven hours sleep which isn't too bad but I still woke up at 3 a.m. and that was way before I wanted to get up considering how much sleep I thought I needed to make up for. Anyway, I go into my bedroom. It's about 6 o'clock at night because I'm just tired and it's been a long day. And I lay down and I turn on the TV and I'm browsing Facebook on my iPad because I just can't help myself. Even then, I have to... I have to browse and see what's going on. I see a post from an audiobook narrator whose page I follow named Paul Woodson. And he's talking about a release of his that had just come out today. And it was one he said he narrated with Christina Delane. And uh, he, I don't think he said these words exactly, but it was a paraphrasing like his magnum opus or his epic or something. And uh, the title he named was Live from New York by James Andrew Miller and Tom Shales. And if you listen to that episode titled Missing in Audio, that was one of the books that I had mentioned that I wanted to see. There was an abridged version that came out a few years ago when the original book came out, but it had not come out as an unabridged version. And make matters worse a newer edition with a decade's worth of material had been added and released not too long ago uh, not too long after they had the 40th anniversary celebration i had actually read the original book because as i said it wasn't commercially available as an audiobook unabridged but having access to the braille and audio reading download site through the Library of Congress, I did get to listen to it unabridged through there as they had a narrator read it. And so that's how I heard the original. But I wanted the updated version and I wanted it for the commercial market because I want to be able to have other people who aren't visually impaired be able to listen to it. Plus, you know, in the case of a book like this, we have a male narrator and a female narrator, and I think that's a good way to handle it when you have quotes from both men and women in the book. If it were up to me, every book would have male and female narrators, but that's a different story for the episode we do called Audiobook Utopia, where we get everything we want in audiobooks, and they still cost the same or even less than they do getting them the real way so i went on social media and i talked about how i had just been talking about this book on the show and now here it is and of course being that the version that came out on june 27th is over 28 hours long obviously they had been working on it for a while i don't mean to suggest even hint at the possibility that someone at highbridge heard my show and was like that's a great idea let's see if we can get that out in two weeks No, this one had been worked on for a while, but I didn't know that because there was no pre-order listing, and I swear to that because every week when I do the Caught My Ear segment of the show, I go to Audible and I scan the pre-orders for different categories, and one of them was Arts and Entertainment. So when I did the show that aired June 30th, I looked at that category and I didn't see this release. And sometimes that happens on audible.com where you will not see every release in a given category. They'll just show up the day they show up. 
I remember that last year there was a book out called The Death of WCW. Um, I knew for fact it was coming out on, on audiobook because the author uh, announced it on his podcast in November of 2015. So I spent a lot of time last year on Audible.com typing in WCW to see if that book would come up as a pre-order listing because I wanted to get that one as soon as it came out. And I did that a lot. And as I kept getting updates on the book from the author talking about where he was in the narration on his podcast, I was like, oh, I can't wait. And I kept searching. And one day I'm not doing anything audiobook related. I don't even remember what was going on, but I was distracted. All of a sudden I head to Facebook late at night and I see a post from the author. Book came out today, Death WCW audiobook at audible.com. So there never was a pre-order listing. It just showed up there. So that does happen from time to time. And I'm not willing to die on this. I'm not willing to insist on it to the point that my life depends on it. But I did not recall ever seeing a pre-order listing for Live from New York, The Unabridged Story of Saturday Night Live. That's not the actual title, but uh, Live from New York definitely is the title. So I didn't see it. So I was very surprised when it came out. And I went on social media and I told the story that you basically heard here. And I mentioned it on Paul's page. I put it on my own Facebook timeline. I tweeted it. I suggested that maybe Highbridge should give me a freebie because after all, I did inadvertently advertise an upcoming release of theirs on the show a couple weeks before it came out. I figured the least they could do is throw me a freebie. And I know they saw it because they liked the post, but they have not given me a freebie and I'm not holding my breath on that. I'm just saying that sometimes it doesn't hurt to ask or beg, you know, if you want if you really want something. I don't know what to say, really. I have been joking with people saying that I must have the ability to either A, see the future, or B, uh, retroactively influence people. You know, like I speak it in June and it starts happening in May. You know, I was joking about that. And I pledge to use my newfound powers for evil. I just want to get that out there right away because evil is more fun. And anyone that watches pro wrestling, as I mentioned the death of WCW earlier, knows that being the bad guy is more fun. But since the book came out on June 27th, it couldn't help but catch my ear for this week's show. And so now from Highbridge Company, You have Live from New York by James Andrew Miller and Tom Shales, narrated by Paul Woodson and Christina Lane. And we are going to play an excerpt for you right now. Paul McCartney in February 1993. I can see Russia from my house. Tina Fey as vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin in 2008. It was my understanding that there would be no math. Chevy Chase as Gerald R. Ford in a presidential debate from the first season. I can't believe I'm losing to this guy. John Lovitz as Michael Dukakis in response to a burst of gibberish from Dana Carvey as George Bush in a presidential debate from 1988. Well, it got a big laugh, but did it get the right laugh? Mike Myers as Lorne Michaels in a Wayne's World reunion with Dana Carvey, written for the 40th anniversary special. And yes, Generalissimo Francisco Franco was still dead, as Chevy Chase had regularly reported in the first season of Weekend Update Mock Newscasts, back when the cast was known as the Not Ready for Primetime Players. There they are, all my friends said John Belushi, made up to look like the old man he would never live to be and pointing to headstones on a cemetery hill in Tom Schiller's poignant 1977 short film Don't Look Back in Anger. All his old cohorts from SNL had preceded him in death, Belushi said, scoffing at suspicions that he would be the first to go. 
Even SNL detractors would have to admit that the range represented on the special verged on awe-inspiring. It was that breadth of scope and style that helped explain the 40-year run in the first place. That and the fact that the show perpetually replenished itself on stage and in the writer's room, launching the careers of many an extraordinary performer in the process. The assembled glitterati watching the special in Studio 8H represented a cross-section of the pop culture elite, just as the performers constituted a remarkable roll call of comedy royalty. They came together to honor a program that had started in the minor tributaries of television and soon became a torrent in the mainstream. Among those seated in the audience that February night was Al Franken, once a pex bad boy of television on SNL, now grown up with a vengeance. As a writer and performer, he had maliciously insulted network president Fred Silverman in a sketch for a 1979 episode of the show. And now he was serving his second term as a U.S. senator from Minnesota. How things change. Bill Murray, as lounge singer Nick Ocean, sang new and gratuitous lyrics to the theme from Jaws, with Paul Schaefer at the piano. Jaws, you took me and made me part of you, you bastard Jaws. Eddie Murphy, who'd refused to take part in the show's 25th anniversary, made a non-comic appearance to say that all was forgiven and that I will always love this show, though he refused to do an impression of scandalized Bill Cosby. Tina Fey and Alec Baldwin paid tribute to Tracy Morgan, former cast member suffering through a long recuperation following a traffic accident. And in a selection of clips, viewers saw the ancient auditions of performers who did make the cast, and a few, Jim Carrey, Kevin Hart, who didn't. I'm just glad it's over, was one of Michaels's comments a few days after the complex, spectacular, exhaustive, and exhausting show had aired. He was saluted at various points in the program, lampooned at others, and was called up onto the very crowded stage for good nights. And it was clear, however much he and the show he created have tried to avoid sentimentality over the decades, that even Michaels was fighting back tears. Afterward, at the Plaza Hotel, worlds collided in a way that only Michaels could probably engineer. With all due respect to Vanity Fair's fabled Oscar bashes, no one else could have summoned the array of musicians, comedians, actors, politicians, and corporate big shots that Michaels brought together that night. Music was in the center ring, starting with Dan Aykroyd summoning on stage the likes of Paul McCartney, Jimmy Buffett, Taylor Swift, Debbie Harry, Miley Cyrus, Ariana Grande, the B-52s, and Michael Bolton. That was hardly that. Jimmy Fallon later called on Prince to take the stage and bring the evening to the proverbial next level. What was being celebrated that night was a phenomenon that, through the endlessly morphing and recharging organism that Michaels had created, had made not only television history, but also played a role in the political and social direction of the nation. Born in an age dominated by three TV networks and a smattering of independent stations, And we're back, and it is now time for me to end the show. We're ending it on a high point with that story and that excerpt. I want to encourage you to check out the book, Life from New York. It's a really good book. I'm a big fan of James Andrew Miller and his writing. I loved Those Guys Have All the Fun and Powerhouse. Uh, and so this one is one that I would definitely encourage you to check out if you're fan of Saturday Night Live or television history or just funny people. And as I said, it's time to wrap up the show this week. I want to remind you that you can head over to facebook.com slash talking audiobooks and like the page and you'll be entered to win four credits from audible.com. That drawing will be held at the end of the month for all people who like the Facebook page at that time will be entered. I also want to remind you that Talking Audiobooks is now on TuneIn and Stitcher, so you can use those apps to catch the podcast each week. I'm not going to give you full instructions on how to do that because I don't know, but we'll probably have something worked into the show 
maybe next week a promo or something so that you can listen and get instructions about how to find it on different apps. But we're growing our content uh, platforms. We're trying to be available in as many places as we can be. And so I'm happy to announce that we are on TuneIn and Stitcher. And yes, the Talking Audiobooks dedicated app is still in the works. It's coming soon, I promise. And again, I just hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Next week's episode, if all goes well, will be formatted a little bit differently. I don't want to talk about what it's going to be just yet because... As I record this now, things could change, but I'm hoping that they don't and that you'll get the episode that I intend for you to get next week. But until then, I want to wish you all a good weekend, a nice week ahead, and I want to encourage you to keep listening. Talking Audiobooks is a trademark of KenJoy Media, produced by KenJoy Media, copyright 2017, all rights reserved. Your host has been Casey Trowbridge, produced by KenJoy, theme music composed by Christian Anderson, licensed through EpidemicMusic.com. Visit our website at TalkingAudiobooks.com, follow us on Twitter at Talking Audio, follow us on Facebook at Talking Audiobooks, and subscribe to the Talking Audiobooks YouTube channel. Here's a disclaimer. Various sponsors like Audible.com help make this podcast possible. However, they are not responsible for its content. They don't dictate what we talk about or what books we share with you. And therefore, the opinions that you hear on here are unfortunately those of the host and our guests. We'd love to hear from you, so email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. Tell us what audiobooks you're listening to, what you've liked in the past, narrators that you like. Ask us questions, anything. It's for your feedback. Feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. That's it. See you next time on Talking Audiobooks.